Demographic deposit dividend in debt, SDSI. This is the last part of the reading by uh, Sunalde Desai. And here we are talking about demographic debt. The point is that uh, if when the demographic transition is, is proceeding, so earlier fertile, because of the fertility rate decline, the, the children, the proportion of children is falling. But because of uh, mortality decline, because of improvements in the medical facilities, people are living longer. And because of that, the elderly population in the total population that is going to increase, right? Right. So the the children among the dependent population that is going to fall, but the elderly population is going to increase. So how you are going to take care of that, right? How you are going to take care of that. There is a study by Ladu Singh and Narayana in 2011. They, uh, the main point which came out was that uh, the elderly people, they consume more than what they can earn. There is, uh, it is not surprising because uh, they are not working. So their earnings, they are living mostly on their savings. So, and they are just uh, having, they're consuming their savings on this. Their consumption is more than what they can earn. So they're dependent upon their personal savings. They have worked throughout the life or they are dependent upon the care from their children, right? They are, they are dependent upon the family members to support them. That's one thing. So we need to take care of how these elderly people are going to care for themselves when they will become the dependent population. Then there is uh, uh, the another study by IHDS, India Human Development Survey. They say this, that more than 80% of the Indians a, who are aged above 60 years, they are living with their children or the other family members. So when they're living with their children and other family members, it means that they're dependent upon them. right? So there is a systematic family relation which is caring for them. And those people who are living away from their children, they're dependent upon the remittances from their children. So either they are living with them, then also they are dependent upon them. If they are living away from them, then also they are, they are dependent upon them. But what is happening is that as the fertility is declining and the migration is also increasing, this support system is, uh, is, uh, is getting changed, is fast declining. Uh, because fertility is declining, so there are the the number of children which will be there in the household which will be support who will be supporting these elderly population when they will become dependent that proportion is falling so the support system support system is falling these elderly population do not have anyone to back on i mean they do not have anyone uh, who, on whom they can be dependent upon secondly there is an increasing migration Children, they move out completely. And suddenly the support system, it breaks. They might be living, I mean, these elderly people could be living on the remittances. But again, the, uh, the, uh, but the entire support system in terms of care, it has started. IHDS also found out that even between 2004-05 and 2011-12, this India Human Development Survey found out that the proportion of senior citizens who live by themselves or only with their spouse, that also has increased. It has increased from 13% to 19% in case of male and from 11% to 16% in case of women. So don't you think there is a huge proportion of people who are living by themselves, who do not have anyone to care for, there is, there should be policies how you are going to take care of your huge elderly population, how you will take care of them, right? So we need to plan for the elderly people as the percentage of the older population is going to rise. One thing which other states also have done, which other countries also have done is that they have increased the, uh, the, the working age 
they have uh, some states, some countries have completely got rid of the retirement age because people are living uh, longer. And some countries, they have increased the retirement age. Right? So they can increase their working age. That is one thing. So employment policy would have to take care that you need to create the employment opportunities for them. Right? For the older population. One is that you can increase the working life and raising the age of retirement. That is one way. That they'll be because when they'll be working more, they have more chances to save, right? And hence they can support themselves. And don't you think that uh, uh, then there is a study by uh, I think there was a study by Sinha in Kanbur uh, in 2012. They said this that they sh there should be more opportunities that should be created for the older population in the social sector also, right? They can work as a para teachers. The way you have paramedical staff. The way you have para uh, legal staff, you can also have para teachers. They could be employed in schools. Maybe the wage is not that high, whatever. But the people who are formally retiring from the sector, from the formal sector, but they can still work. I mean, in some kind of other arrangement. So we need to provide them for the opportunities to work. People are living longer. What will they do in case if they are not going to work? They'll be dependent upon the other people, uh, their dependents who will not be willing to care for them. So state has to create the opportunities for the people. Uh, that is there. Managing soaring healthcare costs. Now that again is a very, very important part because uh, so now that this, I mean, he says this, that uh, if you look at uh, the expenditure, health expenditure, which is incurred in the final years of life, that is huge as compared to the entire other life. So final 10 years of life, you're spending a lot on the health expenditure. And, and on the final of that final 10 years, you are really spending a lot on the health expenditure. Who is going to take care of that? So they say that, um, and managing these huge healthcare costs is, is, is a challenge for every kind of society. So there should be the layered healthcare financing. So basic healthcare measures should be provided by the public healthcare, government hospitals. Emergency care should be universally provided through the state programs like Rashtriya Swastha Bhima Yojana. And tertiary care costs are privatized through the private health insurance system. It should be done like that. There should be the layered financing. And then you have increasing the ability to save for the old people. Increasing the ability to save for the old people. Because you understand one thing that uh, there is, a, again, um, there, was a, there was a study by Ladu Singh and Narayana in 2011. They say that the working age parents, uh, working age adults, they spend around 7 lakh, around, around approximately 7 lakh for caring for their children. Now, if the fertility is going to decline as the demographic transition is going to go, when the fertility is going to decline, they will have to spend less on caring for the children. So when they will have to spend less on the caring for the children, it means that they can save these, this amount. If they can save this amount, they will have this saving for their retirement, for the, for the, for the age after retirement, right? Uh, but the problem is that even if the fertility is falling, the cost of education is not falling. Cost of education is in fact increasing. And people are spending a lot on education also, right? So this saving, which could have been there because of the fertility decline, because now they have to spend less on caring for children, that saving could be completely absorbed by increasing cost of the quality education which they would want to provide to their little children, for, to their less number of children also. So earlier with the larger families, the problem was that they cannot give the quality education to all, to all children. Now with the smaller family, the problem is that they want to give the quality education, but that quality education comes at a huge cost. So these are the things which we need to plan, which we need to tell them was, uh, we, need to we need to create the opportunities for the old people uh, to work more so that they can earn more, they can save more. Secondly, we should have a layered healthcare financing system. And thirdly, 
there should be the increasing ability to save for the old age, right? So in this way, uh, author has sort of uh, defined what is demographic deposit, dividend, and debt, right? So I hope uh, this was a little helpful to you, right? Thank you, Vita.